I am Kamala Harris. My pronouns are she and her. I am a woman sitting at the table wearing a blue suit. Well, we played it for you yesterday. We had to play it again. This is a cautionary tale. This is what happens when your speechwriter quits and simply doesn't care anymore and puts this type of stuff in your copy. Uh, the Veep's attempts to accommodate everyone, including those with visual impairments, went off the rails, as almost everything she does, does. And also, did you see what she did there? This is what's called intersectionality. The vice president just lumped people with disabilities into their ever-expanding definition of oppressed people. This is something we talked about earlier this week as well. When Crayola's Disability Pride Month went off the rails, just like the vice president's little talk there, uh, we're, we're looking into this Disability Pride Month. They have adopted a new flag this year as well. Um, it looks similar to the rainbow flag for gay pride. Now, the reason they are combining disability pride with gay pride and transgenderism, well, progressive socialists want to eliminate anything that makes anyone unique or special. They want to lump everyone into one large category of people who are not privileged. This is the land of make-believe that progressives want to live in. And by lumping visually impaired people in with the LGBTQS plus group and black and indigenous people of color, they can marginalize anyone else who's ever benefited from the perception of privilege. And that's intersectionality in a nutshell. This is one of the radical left's core objectives right now. The Oxford Dictionary describes intersectionality as a study of the way race, class, and gender have been used for discrimination and caused disadvantages in our society. But it's hard to ignore the fact that the people who keep pushing so hard for intersectionality on us and on our kids, whether it's in the form of critical race theory or it's the vice president who you just heard there talking about, the, you know, her blue suit. These are the people who are some of the most advantaged on the planet, like Kamala Harris, like cabinet members, including Pete Buttigieg and four star admirals like Rachel Levine and elected members of the House of Representatives. And it's not just the government. We can't forget that all these Fortune 500 companies supported Black Lives Matter with a lot of cash. Now, instead of focusing, again, on the unique talents and achievements that come from individual traits that make you and I unique, what these people want to do is wash all that away for the benefit of the state and their political power grabs. Let's talk to someone now who knows exactly what's going on and welcome in Dave Rubin, host of the Rubin Report, author of Don't Burn This Country. As always, Dave, great to see you. John, nice to be with you. Uh, I am going by the pronouns Sith Lord and Decepticon Leader, and uh, my disability is a mild kink in my uh, neck. Slept a little funny last night. That makes you special. And, uh, you know, we, we talked, I think you, you shared my tweet of the uh, Disability Pride Month flag. They just changed it last year. What do you think is really going on here? Well, they seem to think that if you can whittle us all down to the things that matter the least about us, and then we can combine those things, that then we will have something stronger. And of course, that's completely the reverse. Nobody watching this wants to be judged on whether they're white or black or gay or straight or able-bodied or disabled or anything else. These months that come and go, whether it's Pride Month or Disability Month or Disabled Pride Month or whatever, God knows what is next, they mean nothing other than this bizarre corporate virtue signaling, whether it's walking into Target and being slammed with he, him, her shirts, which they had at Target during June. By the way, you know what they don't have there? They've got all the shirts. They've got the, you know, the gay crayons and the rest of it. They don't have any customers there because there's never, <laughs> I've been to Target. I go to Target a lot. I just moved here in Florida, have to pick up a lot of stuff. And uh, there's never any people buying those things. So it's corporate virtue signaling. Nobody that's w buying their crayons for their kids care about queer this or trans that or anything else. They care if, I don't know, do the, the crayons work? How about that? That would right. be something. Um, but, but this is what the left has left. And it's why so many people are seeing through the nonsense anymore. It's, it's the complete reverse of what Martin Luther King would have wanted for his children, of course, being judged on the content of their character rather than the color of their skin. And we just have to keep pushing through because it's just going to get more bizarre. You know, you showed that Kamala Harris clip and it's like, try to imagine her in a meeting with, say, I don't know, President Xi from China right. and saying what her pronouns are and what color pantsuit she's wearing. I, I don't speak Chinese, but I, I would imagine it would be pretty hilarious what he would whisper to the guy next to him. Yes, when, when our world leaders are sitting down for bilats and actually starting that way, then we will all know it's time to run for the hills and find a bunker someplace. Uh, and this is a question I think a lot of people have is, is this the future of every meeting we have where we have to sit down, identify ourselves and our pronouns and... 
Yeah, uh, this is not a future. Not I my live. meetings, John. I no, have two no. companies. We're not going to be doing it at my companies. I suspect you guys aren't going to be doing it over at uh, Newsmax. But yeah, I think it is. It is. I mean, joking aside, it is the future of sort of blue state corporate, that conglomerate thing that it has become. This will be where if you have a company that is in California, you're going to hire unqualified people based on their pronouns and their disabilities and the rest of it. You will no longer make good products because you will have not hired the cream of the crop. You will have based, uh, you have, will have hired based on other attributes that are irrelevant to the job. You will make a worse product. You will sell less things, uh, whatever, regardless of what business you're, you're in. Uh, you'll be a worse hair cutter or a worse plumber or you'll sell less widgets. Uh, and then there'll be another part of the country which will be where we are in Florida and in some of the red states where people will not do these things, will not care about what your pronoun, pronoun, pronouns are. And guess what? People will flourish. And Florida, if that's the case, will continue to gain congressional seats in California and in New York will lose them. Uh, but I digress. Uh, one other topic, too, with you, Dave, I think two more, actually. I want to talk about Clarence Thomas. He's stepping down as a lecturer at George Washington University. Uh, this comes after students there have completely lost it. Uh, the Daily Mail says Justice Thomas informed GW Law that he is unavailable to co-teach a constitutional law seminar uh, this fall. He's been doing it for 11 years. And I don't blame him for doing this. Um, why go someplace where you're not wanted? The students there do not like Clarence Thomas. They don't want to be called the whatever they're, you know, they're changing their name now because they're no, you can't say colonials anymore. That's offensive. Uh, and this is, I, I think, unfortunate, but the right move for Clarence Thomas. Yeah, you know, everyone has their own threshold for the nonsense. And Clarence Thomas has put up with more nonsense over the years than most, right? I mean, at his at his hearing when he was uh, going to become a Supreme Court justice at the confirmation hearing, it was Joe Biden, then Senator Joe Biden, uh, who was basically trying to destroy Clarence Thomas. He's gone through, you know, 35 plus years of having the machine try to destroy him, of being called all sorts of the worst things because he's a conservative who just happens to be black. And I would say it's a, it's a darn shame for those students and the other faculty, because whether you agree with every one of Justice Thomas's decisions or not, very few people, including if you just listen to some of the words from Ruth Bader Ginsburg from way back when, or even Elena Kagan in the last couple of weeks, they, they know that he knows his stuff. They may right. not fully believe uh, in his judicial philosophy, but this is someone who everyone could learn from. And the fact that the protesters, whatever level of headache that he was dealing with by showing up there, uh, he just doesn't want to deal with it anymore. I, I wish him nothing but the best. And I hope he stays on the Supreme Court for a long time, obviously. But yeah, everyone has a tolerance limit on the headache and the nonsense and being yelled at and all the rest of the stuff. And he'll probably just write some more books or, yeah. you know, do some other interesting things. And you would think some... Like, some overconfident college student with a lot of hubris would want to go into Clarence Thomas's class and kind of lock horns with them a little bit. Of course, no. They, they, they just can't even, they cannot even have him on, the, on campus because they're triggered about it. Uh, last topic for you, Dave, Brittany Griner. And there's this uh, supposed prisoner swap with the Russians. We're going to trade Brittany Griner uh, and Paul Wellen, who's a Marine who's been locked up there in Russia for a long time, for a guy named Victor Bout, who is known as the Merchant of Death. Maybe a player to be named later. I don't know. But this Victor Bout yeah, guy is a bad joke. dude. You Go got ahead. my joke. I was going to throw in two draft picks. <laughs> uh, yeah, this whole, thing is, this whole thing is extremely bizarre. I mean, really, really bizarre. So she's been held there now for months and months. It barely made the media until the last couple of days. Uh, and, you know, let's just I know everyone watching this knows about the endless double standard we see with all of these things. But of course, if it was a Republican administration, dare I say, uh, Donald Trump, people would have been going crazy. Here is this black lesbian uh, professional basketball player who's being held in Russia. This is the worst thing ever. But somehow when it happened under the Biden administration, nobody cared. Now we're doing this odd deal. I, there's something else going on here. I, yeah. I don't know what it is, uh, but something feels very, very off about this whole thing. Yeah, we get Brittany Griner back who didn't want to kneel for the Pledge of Allegiance or for the national anthem and Russia gets back. Uh, this weapons dealer. It doesn't seem like a fair trade to me. Oh, of course, you want Brittany Griner home. You want Paul Wellen home, whatever it takes. Um, but you wonder if uh, the Biden administration may be getting played here on this deal. Dave Rubin. Listen, I think we could have thrown in Megan Rapinoe. We could have thrown in Rachel Levine. We could have thrown in Buttigieg, <laughs> oh, Corinne Jean-Pierre. I'm going to put a package together, see what, what, what I can move here, OK? And isn't Edward Snowden still over there? Does he want to come? I don't know. We, we, could, we could go on and on. Great to see you, Dave Rubin. We'll see you on the Internet. Good to see you, John. Hey guys, it's Rob Carson. I want to tell you about the Patriot Gold Group. But first, let me tell you that the S&P has already lost $8.2 trillion in 2022. Did you know that? 
peak inflation has not even hit despite the Fed rate hikes on groceries, on gas. You know it as well as I do. Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs are warning of another 20% drop. Inflation is winning in a knockout right now. The Fed is going to raise rates again at the end of July. Meanwhile, Goldman, Wells Fargo, and Bloomberg are all forecasting gold to surpass all-time highs. If you want to invest in gold, call 888-936-2373 now. Call the Patriot Gold Group today and ask about their no-fee-for-life IRA. Sounds like a good deal, don't it? Here's the number, 888-936-2373, 888-936-2373 for the Patriot Gold Group. 